Ellen. Hey, what's keeping you up so late? Got something on your mind? Let's talk about it. My name is Coffee Dark and Sweet, and you are now tuned in to the Midnight Coffee Podcast. Here, have a sip. What up, though? This is your humble host, Coffee Dark and Sweet, and we are here for a very, very, very special episode um, of Midnight Coffee. It's special because the first published episode, myself and my guest, May Henny, did together, and um, we touched on a lot of different uh, topics and subjects, and all within the realm of mental health, and we are about to get into some... Um, uh, definitely a real mental health conversation because the whole experience was just a mind fuck. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, so I'm really, really, really excited to have you back. Thanks for joining us, Boo. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be back. And it was just on some impromptu stuff. I right. Mean, I hate I couldn't make it back before, but it was just a mind to be here Everything today. does yes. what it's supposed to do. Yes. Yes. I appreciate that. Oh, how you been feeling most of the time? Girl, most of the time, uh, it's just, I've been feeling, um, I guess I'm feeling like mentally I'm at the point where I'm recognizing my patterns of what I do and constantly go through, right? But I'm trying to take a step back and see what can I actively do about them. So um, I think I was talking to you about, like, I feel like I've been struggling with imposter syndrome lately. Mm -hmm. Like, am I really a poet? Am I really somebody that should be doing podcasts? Like, Mm. am I really just, am I even a good mom? Like, I've just been been not struggling with it, but it's just a lot of questions. I've been questioning myself. Um, And it's not. Do you doubt God? No. In that same fashion, because you the same thing. I know, right? And it's not those things, but it's kind of like, I know where I'm at. I know where I see the vision that God keeps showing me he had for me. But the math ain't math and how I'm going to get there (laughs) with the current mental state that I'm in. So I guess I'm I'm trying to get the catalyst going to try to understand how I can move that forward to get the person, to get to be the person that others see in me. That God sees in me, that I see in myself, but I'm just not showing up. I feel like being that. But you already are that person. You said, mm. I've been sitting around trying to figure out, am I trying to be a poet? Am I really meant to be a podcaster? But you're doing those things already. So what do you mean are you really meant? Nigga, you doing it. The fact is you're not trying. You're doing it. Like, right. effortlessly. Right. Like, it's, <laughs> So where, like, why, where's the question really coming from? I guess because, too, when just learning about myself with ADHD and things like that, I hop from one thing to the next, long as it keeps my Superpower! You know? (laughs) You know how many skills you can master? Okay, we learn in semesters and trimesters. You talking about you pick up something for four months, then you pick up something else for two months, then you pick up something else for three months, and then six months later, you're doing all of those things like... Like you supposed to be doing, or six anything. months later, I'm doing none of them, and well, and got to scrap the table and start all over. That you literally started that you were doing for okay. six months. <laughs> so <laughs> all over the place. I was in a meeting uh, recently on live uh, on Zoom, and the ho- I was making tea for my girls, and I was unbraiding, undoing braids. You know what I'm saying? Uh, prepping them to get their hair washed mm-hmm. and all types of stuff. And I'm sitting these like. You know me, I be talking. So I'm sending these, like, long-winded ass messages because I told them, like, I'm not going to be present or speaking, but I communicate through messages. Mm-hmm. They keep, <laughs> like, three messages coming in, like, how is she doing that that fast? <laughs> and then <laughs> Benson was like, yeah, she probably doing a bunch of other shit, too. I was like, that, my friends, is ADHD. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, For sure. 
I looked at this keyboard a thousand times. I know yeah. where the letters are. <laughs> <laughs> Right. <laughs> but if you're not doing that, like sometimes if I'm not doing that, I feel like I feel like that's the chaos. Right. <laughs> like what you mean I only got one thing to do? Focus on laundry. <laughs> this should be here that's all week. Boring. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a crisis in the middle of laundry and you got my attention. Okay. <laughs> I need a crisis with laundry, then we can get shit popping. Then, when the laundry becomes overwhelming, it disappears. <laughs> My brain cannot do it until I cannot take it anymore. Yes. Yes. Exactly. yes yeah. Yes, yes. Somebody, I was. <laughs> oh, and my five year old, right? She'd be like, and I'm going to have him on the show. I cannot wait. I've been prepping questions and shit. I've been like, listen, I cannot wait for this episode when I bring my kids up here. Um, but um, so. <laughs> I be asking them real random questions. Well, to them, it would sound like weird and random. Like, uh, do you enjoy your life? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just like randomly ask them. And then you will never know the type of stuff that come out of asking a question like mm -hmm. that. And you get to really know your kids and what's important to them. Mm -hmm. If I, I ask my baby, do you really love your life? Or do you love your life? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, oh, why? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And she's like, oh. I enjoyed watching my sister have a good time at her birthday party. Mm, that's Family beautiful. is mm -hmm. important to her. Celebration right. is important to her. Like, you know what I'm saying? I got mm -hmm. all of that just from that simple. It's a simple question. You think mm -hmm. it's coming off left field. But you know how many times I wish somebody would have asked me that and sincerely wanted to know the answer? Right. And not responded in a way where they took their offense out on me. Mm -hmm. I'd be telling people, mostly my children, just because you are offended, does not mean you have been offended. Mm. Your triggers are really your responsibility. Right. Like, that's just where the boundary, that's mm. where the lines be drawn. <laughs> you know crazy. what I'm saying? That's good <laughs> that you're teaching them that because I'm just not learning that. You know, I'm Every still single thing that I learn that. right yeah. now, I figure out how to teach, teach them, them. Yeah. immediately. Mm -hmm. Immediately. Why wait till they 25 and 29 and 28 to get, to get, I wish somebody had to put mm -hmm. me to the side and been like, you being obnoxious as fuck. What do you want? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's obnoxious. Okay, what that mean? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Let's not play with these children like they slow. They mm -hmm. not. You can literally they sponges. You can teach them any literal thing. Mm -hmm. Like speaking of which, like the mental illness conversation. My five year old, she be ping pong, 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 but be reading chapter books mm. and want to do yoga in the morning. Mm -hmm. So it's like I be. I be taking, I be having so much grace. I have, I practice. That's my main thing. It's like grace, right? Because I don't. They know what they cultivate, and I really don't. It's I'm finding out as I go, mm -hmm. and so I try to let them be as much of them as they can possibly be. And a lot of times, it's a lot for me to handle. Mm -hmm. and I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes I be thinking, I be bullshitting. How gentle, bitch. <laughs> like this, <laughs> this parenting game. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch. This shit is a scam. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'll I be smacking the same. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yes. This shit. Sometimes. But when you look at, oh uh, man, it'd be like the purpose, the reason why you live in. So I decided. And that's really the decision that you're making. That, I feel like that helps alleviate imposter syndrome in itself. Mm. When you make a decision, mm. I know who I am, mm -hmm. what I want, what I'm doing, what and who I'm doing it for, how long I'm willing to do certain things. And regardless to whether I am actively paying attention or not, I'm making these decisions. And if I can remember, and usually meditation is when I remember, like when I made that decision and I can see the fruition. I can see all of, I can see how I created all of this. Mm -hmm. So it'd be like, that kind of alleviates the imposter syndrome. If you were not to, if you really know, if you really believe like in a real God, not like a God that's Christian or God that's Buddhist or God that's, but like a real omnipresent, omnipotent, Source. immaculate, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Why would it need to take up a religion? I, why would it need to take up a gender? I just don't. Do y'all understand who y'all really are? This mm -hmm. is the thing. So it's like if I'm, I know before I go any in any room, God perceives me. So that means if I'm there, it's because I my seat is already at the table. Yeah, that that hit because it made me feel like, 
And I, I do feel like that. Like, no, God too powerful for one identity, one being to be one thing. And it's like, well, the part that you're struggling with, May, is that you feel like you have to put yourself in a box. You feel like you have to only be able to do A, B, C, and D. And it's like, no. Maybe, like you said, your superpower is being able to do multiple things. And you just have to know which season in your life you need to cultivate and work on. When is it ways. time to take up those new little spur mm-hmm. moment hobbies? And it's the ones that I keep coming back to. It's like poetry. Shy, I, 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 I discovered it by myself on accident the Detroit Public Scene. But Shy, once I met him, he was the person to reintroduce it to me. And then I lost it again, moved, life happened. But then I rediscovered it by myself again. And then I fell out, and then I rediscovered it again with Shaw. So it's like, it's the thing that I keep coming back to. A connection. It keeps coming back. So it's like, I can't run away from it. I know it's in there. I just got to figure out how to get the shit out. And that's the part where I'm at now. Like, okay, it keep calling you. You keep feeling like you seeing stuff and you missing out on these opportunities because you feeling like you ain't did the work. So mm-hmm. you need to, you need to figure it the fuck out. But <laughs> ain't nothing to really figure out. The work is whatever you decide it is. Mm, like is if you spend so my you, learning season, my observing season, and I just learn it actively pursuing. Like mm-hmm. if you if you learning something, if I'm learning something I'm interested about, I'm not just learning it like you telling it to me. I'm not regretting it and tell you. I'm out in the field practicing it. Mm-hmm. I want to see how far and deep I can. Take whatever concept this is that y'all just get. I just got gotcha. <laughs> like, <Gotcha. laughs> yeah. you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And that make make me seem like I'm flighty or I hop in and out of stuff like consistently. But ain't that what we supposed to do? I feel like it should. We playing. I don't know. <laughs> I just feel like I'm here to play. <laughs> Sometimes in every game, like you know how hard it is for champions to beat it. Mm. Every game, just because it's a success, don't mean it wasn't grueling, don't mean it wasn't a task, don't mean it's not going to cost you something. Mm -hmm. Have fun. You know what I'm saying? Fun even has a consequence, though. That part. And we, and it's accepting that, that, that consequence in my life. Like, I, um, recently did a performance for TEDx. That, that in, in congruence with this show, actually, are some things that I had been building like literally building in my subconscious that just uh, that I gave birth to Mm. so can you tell the people in case they don't know what TEDx is so TED stands for technology I think education and design Mm -hmm. don't quote me I'm probably wrong (laughs) but I think (laughs) something like that it's it's not it's not some random person people keep asking like well who is TED first of all I do not know but I found out it's (laughs) (laughs) his name charlie but i'm like ted mm-hmm. like, mm. <laughs> anyway <laughs> so it was like uh it wasn't something that just happened to me um and some stuff is immaculate like that it just happens to you mm-hmm. that's beautiful right you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. but some stuff you got to go and get. Mm. And I realized, like, the whole time I'm sitting there, I'm sweating, Paul. <laughs> For lack of better language. Like, I'm just, like, I, I kept having these nightmares where I would just get out there and choke. <laughs> How did you find out about it, or did it find you? Um, I I had a friend of mine, um, Eric Thompson Jr., who I know who had done it before. And then um, I had actually my friend, First, my very first introduction to it was with Kendrick Lamar. Okay. And he said, um, I remember served sandwiches and crumb allowances. I don't know how much I, of this I can say. Finesse a nigga with some kind of fist, and I don't count in this. Uh, damn. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I was like, well, what the fuck is a TED, TED talk? talk. Yeah, and I was like, like so I looked it up. That was my first interaction with it. And I was like, um, I got into it. And I was like, these people are important. I'm not that important. And, 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 and in that moment, it wasn't necessarily something that I thought, like, oh, maybe I could do this. Mm-hmm. But I started watching more and more of them, and I'm like, oh, maybe I can do this. Mm-hmm. And then Eric Thompson Jr., who was, like, adjacent to me, you know, as a as a person, not mm-hmm. just as, like, an artist or a poet or author, but just, like, as a person, mm-hmm. you know? Um, I was like, if he can do it, I definitely can do it. And this is why comparison is the thief of joy. Because mm-hmm. you will look at somebody and think, like, oh, 
why they doing it and I'm not. Mm -hmm. Instead of realizing that that is a reflection of everything that you can be. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that goes both ways. And because good and bad are subjective, you know what I'm saying? Um, But it didn't matter at that moment. It didn't matter what I had done that I was ashamed of or what I considered to be bad or what I knew people around me considered to be bad about me. I was on that stage. Mm. Nobody can deny that. Mm -hmm. Not even me. Right. Imposter syndrome, gone. Mm -hmm. And it it wasn't something that happened during. It was something that happened kind of afterward. You know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? After I realized, like, I did it. Nobody can take from me that this thing happened. And regardless of whatever I am right now, this thing is happening to me. Right. It was just a couple of years ago I could not even have fathomed. Even though I was exposed to it, I could not imagine it would be me. Mm, that's beautiful. So tell us, like, how were you, I guess, like, how were you feeling up to? So what did you get up there to say? What did you get up there to do? Like, what was the... Before you get into that. Oh, go ahead. Uh, Ted is technology, entertainment, and design. I was close. Education, I learned a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, but for real, I really did. I was uh, that was my favorite part about it, though. I was thoroughly entertained, and a lot of their performances. I was like, we are so deeply enthralled in Detroit right now, mm-hmm. and I loved it so much. <laughs> it was, yeah, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah, I was close. <laughs> Go ahead. No, I was just saying. I was just wondering, like how. What was there like any prep work? Did you get up there and did you talk? Did you speak your poetry? Like I what, did what poetry. Um, there was a lot of prep work and a lot of that prep work happened at open mics in the city. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is the beauty of something that 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 exists that that heartbeat that you described earlier that you keep coming back to mm-hmm. is because it refines you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You in if you in the right room, everybody is still. If mm-hmm. they not still. They um, still wool. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But they still, still. Mm-hmm. We sharpen each yeah. other, like, okay. on, on every level, not just with poetry, but, like, this is what, it's a classroom, it's a church. That's what we're here for. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of that, that's where a lot of the prep work actually happens. Um, and I, the poem that I did is not something that was, n- like, a, like new to me, but it was something that was, like, I just wrote this year, and it was, like, an immaculate conception kind of poem. Mm. You know, and it just kind of came out of me. And it was about, um, it was about my mom originally. It still is about my mom. It's about mothers, um, like, how we all have the same mother, pretty much, which is earth. Mm -hmm. But if you can pick up on certain nuances of things I say, like, um, you know, don't sweep your feet and, you know, peace be still Mm -hmm. and, and whoop woodworks closets have woodworks too you know what i'm saying then it would tie you directly into my experience with my matriarch Mm -hmm. and some of the things that it might seem trivial in the moment just like mr miyagi right he had him wash you know wash Mm -hmm. the thing Mm -hmm. over and over again you know what i'm saying wax on wax off (laughs) oh wax on wax off and it may seem trivial at the moment but in my real life in my own brain i learned to find those closets those dark closets and turn the light on and Mm -hmm. clean the woodwork in my brain Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Really clean it out and figure out, like, oh, it's a bunch of gunk in here. Let's, because people tell you the wrong shit your whole life, don't they? Mm-hmm. If you let them. Right. And then a lot of us are not in um, environments that are water and sunlight. Mm. You know, so we be struggling to be seeds. We can't see the seed for the darkness, mm-hmm. you know? So when you get, when you, for me, when the next step is like a book or some, a book or some shit, because it's like... <laughs> What's taking me so long? Right, right, got you. It's come. It's come. But yeah, uh, it was like, damn. Look at the fruit. Yeah. yeah this, that. Look at the fruit. Yeah. And it, I know, regardless of what happened along the way, that it happened in here first. Mm-hmm. It mattered in my mind. It mattered to me, and then it became like a physical matter. But it happened. To ha- it had to happen in my mind first, mm-hmm. and that's how everything worked. Right. My whole house, the way it look right now, I dreamed it first. Mm. I literally did. And then when I walked into it, I looked around and, like, took a mental snapshot. And I swear to God, every day I open my door and I walk into that mental snapshot. It's crazy mm. when you realize it eliminates imposter syndrome. It's impossible 
to not know who did what's happening when you literally dreamed it. <laughs> dreamed it, yes. <laughs> dreamed it, yes. Dreamed it. I got a dream of, uh, I had a dream right after the Motown slam that Ari Lane won. And it was that I won a slam. And I just woke up from that shit. I'm like, I know I was dreaming. Effortless. Like, Effortless. like, I know I was dreaming. <laughs> like, I know. Like, but why like, you feel like you know you was dreaming? Because it's like just like you said, you got to dream it first, right? That was the literal dream of it, right? Mm-hmm. But I woke up like, bitch, your anxiety is not even gonna let you get up there, be able to remember a whole piece for thirty minutes, and not pass and out. not pass out, and <laughs> be able to do it with confidence and mean that shit, bitch. So I know I had to be dreaming, right? But it's like, no, I don't know how we're going to get there, but it's possible. It is possible. So that's kind of like been the, I would say, my new catalyst of this stuff. like Of uh, the correction of the imposter the, syndrome. Uh, yeah, the, the trying to correct it and trying to face it head on. Like, you can do it. We just got to figure out. We just got to figure out. I think, I think um, like I was saying earlier, like, it's, uh, it's like a, um, amount a certain amount of like dissociativeness kind of going on here mm-hmm. because when we were younger we saw people our age doing what we were doing and we assumed that they had a certain lifestyle attached to that mm-hmm. and so now that we get here and we're our age and we're doing what we're doing we're looking around and our lifestyle don't match what was happening mm-hmm. but that's because we didn't know them people for real right, right. <laughs> Outside looking in, like, ooh. We didn't know them before real. Later shit. Like, ooh. Chances are, we twinning. Right, right, <laughs> like, right. real heavy that we mm-hmm. twinning. Gotcha. You know, um, nobody just randomly, like, starts where they are. Mm-hmm. You know, and I was having a conversation with a uh, longtime friend of mine, and she was like, I feel like, you know, I could do this and this and that, but I don't have this and this and that. I said, when I started baking cakes, I didn't even have, like, a electric hand mixer. Mm. I had a whisk and a bowl. Mm. And I knew for a fact, just because I knew that cake came before the machine, that I can do whatever I wanted to as long as I had the right ingredients. All right, gotcha. The the cake paid for the stuff that it took to make it easier to right. make cake. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> the product paid for what I need. Gotcha. gotcha. And it does it over and, and over and over, and over again. again. It will do that with your home, with your finances, with your life, with your children, with your community, with your relationships, with everything that's showing up around you. It will continue to just do that. Just do it. And be a reflection. I feel like the more mm. I give myself credit for being a great mother, the greater of a mother I can become. Mm. And I'm just relishing in that immediate, spontaneous, mm. like never ending amount of creation I can do when I really believe in using my powers for good. Mm hmm. Yeah, I'm like, I just ain't none of this shit happening by accident. And I'm not in control. So, <laughs> might as well have a party. <laughs> might, as well. might as well celebrate. We and deal with the hangovers. We, we recover. We, we get on with it. So, have you celebrated yourself <laughs> after this, Ted? Um, I have in so many ways. Um, I'm, I'm very practical, like as a personality. So it could be simple stuff like, uh, a spiritual bath for like, you know what I'm saying? That make me feel celebrated. Um, and, and spending time with the people that I love, like really having them close to me, Mm -hmm. um, kind of deal and creating more scenarios where we can be like as close as possible, even if we not physically touching, just, you know, that kind of stuff is like celebration to me. Mm -hmm. So and then my my uh, my baby turned eight, so I threw a party for her. Yeah. So I mean, I guess celebration is subjective, right? But right. I feel accomplished, and I know, like, I hate the term "the sky is the limit" because that is limiting. It's it's encapsulated in the atmosphere, mm. but infinity is. is <laughs> It's a limit. Like yeah. I'm just like, really, I don't really have not a single limit to what's mm-hmm. actually going on here. I done done so much shit. <laughs> I done woke up and it's way too many dreams to be like, oh, I'm somebody else. Like you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> the, they don't happen by no reason. And if mm-hmm. you accept that and you really like believe in them, then you, I mean, it just kind of show up. And they, they really make, don't have a choice. I get that because I think I had posted on social media the other day 
and my coworkers kind of making me start a business and you had commented like that's how it happens like yes and it just started because Juneteenth last Juneteenth I had just came back to work off medical and I was like you know what I'm gonna make breakfast for everybody for free I'm gonna buy it I ain't gonna charge people nothing I'm gonna just give it away <laughs> and I did that and, and they won't leave you alone. All these holidays coming up. They girl. won't leave me alone. <laughs> not only will they not leave me alone on that Juneteenth, and then I did it. Juneteenth was on a Monday. And then on that following Friday, I did it again. I made all my money back. So it ended up being free to me. And you enjoyed and yourself? I enjoyed myself. And then, But <laughs> after that, I was like, I don't want to do it because I did it because I wanted to do it. Now that y'all want me to do work. it, it's a lot of work, and and the expectation is okay. more when somebody else is asking when you, you do want, something. Yeah, yes. like I, I, did I would it like to I be an offering. To. Okay, and it's weird because it would be like, okay, but you got to make money, and it's like, okay, but if that's my focus, then I'm going to be miserable. Then I'm going to be miserable, <laughs> like, and that's exactly <laughs> so. So this last week, I did steak and eggs, but it was only supposed to be for four people. Mm-hmm. Ended up making steak and eggs for fifteen to twenty fucking people, and it was like. Now they're like, oh, can you do it? We didn't know about it. Can you run it back next week? Can you do it? Like, we'll we'll pay whatever. And I'm just like, well, fuck it. Like, God, I guess this is just what you want me to do. Like, this is what you need me to do. You need me to feed the people in this building and make breakfast for motherfuckers. The people really be coming in there hungry. And do it. Do it. I feel like do it as long as it's easy. My my friend have to uh, calm me down a lot because I'm. <laughs> not me. And she be like, uh, <laughs> if it's not easy, you're not supposed to be doing it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you sound like Bob Ross. <laughs> but yeah, like if it's not. And it was easy because we not work do it as long as it because of everything easy. that's going on in our industry right now with strikes is not a lot of work to be done. So yeah. I have a lot of free time at work. Like my supervisor came right in, looked at what we was doing, and was like, all right, make sure y'all clean this up. Like, so it was, then his boss came in the building. I know you can smell the, the stuff that I'm cooking. He ain't you even cooking come it in to the me. building? In the building, girl, yeah, in the break room. No, I'm cooking in the building. <laughs> right then and there. Come look at this. You <laughs> want yours? You want yours medium? You said, is this <laughs> is this medium enough for you, girl? I have people coming in the building. You want it like, like that? Yeah. I'm about to see how everybody else turned out for a minute first. But they like, I got so many compliments on it, and so many people want me to do it again. I'm just like, yeah, I got to make sure I make some money from yes. doing it now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, when the demand. Know, it's the demand now. They, people are like, no, nah, I may. If anybody else cooking, I don't want it. But if you cooking, I want it. I'm like, I don't even cook. Like, what is you doing? Like, this is not my life outside of here. Like, I make my kids breakfast. That's, I just like making breakfast. I'm like, I just make them breakfast. That's it. But... Is that one of the things, so I feel like that's one of the things you get, like, imposter syndrome about, because you're sitting here right now, like, but I don't even do this. <laughs> that's and, how I'm feeling, uh, like. I can't ask me to do it, gosh. <laughs> they all say they Follow love me. it, but this is not what this I do. Not, this is gosh. not what I do. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, yes, you're right, because that's how I feel about my poetry. Like, this is not what I do, but y'all keep telling me this is. <laughs> so, yes. I'm saying you're lying, girl, <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to be like an asshole, but no, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> she's trying to be honest. No, I'm not. It's Anybody has to heat up best <laughs> Whole struggle, but, but okay. Like, I was it. sitting here. I was I'm not in control. That was the biggest takeaway. Like I'm not in control. Fuck it. You not? I ain't doing shit. Up. That shit was coming out of her effortlessly. <laughs> I was sitting over there, like, girl, what? <laughs> Why would you put that many bars on a table? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just talking. Because like. people think, okay, I was just having a conversation with a friend recently. And um, it's not that I was just talking earlier about open mics. And um, they will definitely instill some imposter syndrome in you because you realize people that you have looked up to for years are not doing anything. Mm-hmm. And you're like, damn, the fuck is my fault? Anyway, uh, but um, so uh, we were talking about how, like, you know, it was a certain point in time where we had to, like, earn our features. And, you know, it was and it was more than just being a good artist. There were other things that you had to do. You Mm -hmm. you had to show and show up as in order Mm -hmm. for people to say, like, hey, can you feature it? You know, and now it seems like it's something that is just like given. (laughs) I've heard that from multiple people. 
You want a feature? You want a feature? You want a feature? How many cousins you got? Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. it's like so, and and, and the basis, the basic line is like when it when it really came out to him, I'm like, well, if you're not reading, you probably shouldn't be writing. Mm. I like that. You probably should not be doing that. Mm-hmm. I agree. I agree. Um, like that's really what it came down to. Cause I saw somebody like, oh, maybe you know, thinking it's a, but everybody don't think the same as you. And I'm like, all right, but where the thinking come from? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The books. Right. Uh, open right. one, two, three, four, <laughs> please, and just say something that is not um, redundant mm-hmm. or like you know, yeah, you know, and then. I also feel like people who clap, like for mediocrity, mm. don't really love you. Mm. If somebody looks at if my if my any one of my babies bring home like all C's, you think I'm gonna be happy about that? Right. Not just not because I con- I'm concerned with like a, a grade or school system, but because that shit should be easy. Mm-hmm. And it's and if it's not easy to you, you need help. Mm. Cause you sh- you shouldn't just sit there and be like. All right, C, cool. No, for what? When right. you can get an A, that part, it, and that's and that's really the point of it. Because at the end of the day, we not, and while we may be sensitive to imposter syndrome, ADHD, and autism, and and whatever kind of thing we can find to have cushion around our hearts for, you know what I'm saying, and give people grace for. Everybody not made like that. That part. So I look at them and I think the world is gonna eat my babies. I don't give a fuck how smart they are. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I have to be like, um, I have to, I have to also let them know that mm-hmm. don't nobody give a fuck. <laughs> and I, I don't say it like literally like that, but they really right. don't. They don't let me have a call, uh, Charlie and say, Oh, you know, I'm really anxious. I don't think I can do this. You think anybody would ever come? <laughs> I'm just saying like it's certain stuff that mm-hmm. you just, you, gotta you know, do, you got to yeah. show up. Mm-hmm. No, regardless how you feel, I was, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was anxious as fuck, but it's like you, certain things. Um, and I feel like as long as I continue to do that in their lives, mm. then they will have an example of what it looked like. Gotcha. Pushing past. I do it. I do it sick. I do it tired. I do it crying. I do it, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And whatever kind of way I show up, I just do mm. for them. Mm-hmm. So they know what consistency look like. You know what I'm saying, and they know what reality look like, mm. okay? Because yeah. that's and that's, I f- maybe that's a major part in it too, like as far as like abandoning the idea of imposter syndrome is. How can I sit up and question myself if I'm actively doing it and I see the work? Mm. But you're not going. Of course, you're going to feel like that's not real if you're not actually doing the work. Gotcha. This didn't just happen. I had to apply. It was a process. Like mm-hmm. multiple interviews. Like you know what I'm saying. It was a thing. Mm-hmm. It w- it didn't just happen. Right. It wasn't just you know. And and a lot of stuff is like magical and spontaneous, and that's cool too. But like I said, my kids were not. They were magical and spontaneous. But at the end of the day, two people decided to make a ch- child. Right. That's especially with all of the options it we have worth, nowadays. Yeah. If they exist, it's because we decided we it was worth it. To have them. Mm-hmm. We got to take responsibility for that. Gotcha. That's my, and that's, that's be my major focus. So, of course, they need to see me do this mm-hmm. kind of shit. Yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because what sure. the fuck, where the limits at? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it ain't none. <laughs> it ain't none. Yeah. Gotcha. That's what I mean when I say the air is lighter. Yeah. Like, shit, we yeah. up here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the absolutely. Everest that's been climbed. Yeah. We'll do Everest. Yeah. I got you. I got you. That is important to set that example. Yeah. Um, I had did for my birthday, I wanted to give myself the the gift of facing the fear. And I'm scared of heights. I don't like as tall as I am, I don't like being high up off the ground, period. But I decided to repel down an eleven story building backwards <laughs> so uh, uh people kept telling me you crazy like this is this and that but i did it What's and my, exactly my but you old, got through it i got through it my oldest daughter watched me and as i'm coming down everybody on the ground singing happy birthday to me and that's kind of like ignited the fire like okay bitch you done did that shit now you no know Everest. you can do what 
the New fuck Everest, ever, bitch. Okay? <laughs> and that's kind of like the wave I'm still kind of on. Like, yeah. that's why I'm trying to figure it out. Like, what's holding you back? What's Nothing. stopping you? Why you feeling like this? Like, let's get to it. Let's conquer that. Like, let, let's figure that out so that you can go and do all this shit that you felt like you couldn't do. So that you can get over this motherfucking hump that you feel like is holding you back. Let right. these veils down. Cause your kids need to see that. Now my oldest daughter, she saw me do it. My youngest wasn't there, but I showed her the pictures. My oldest, she's like, "Mommy, next year can I do that?" She's like, "I want to do it." So I need, like you said, the limits need, disappear. The, the ceiling, limits. the glass ceiling, kind of just disappear. Like, my mommy did, and I can do it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I definitely think this is it's definitely all mental when we come to mm-hmm. these limitations, and mm-hmm. that's kind of the wave I'm, I'm trying to kind of hold on to. Like, okay, I recognize the parts of me that's keeping me back in certain areas, like you. Figuring out how to do the fucking work to get forward and get past it. That's the that. evidence is the majority. Yes. Like in any kind of case, it don't matter if it's positive or negative. If somebody died or somebody lived or somebody living mm-hmm. up or whatever. Evidence mm. is the biggest indicator of what's actually happening. Gotcha. Gotcha. I appreciate that. Some people around you, they can throw at your evidence, mm. but you know, like. Tell me, tell me anybody who murdered somebody don't know exactly how they did that shit. <laughs> you know what you did. You know night. exactly what you did. <laughs> and people think like, oh, murdering is so hard. That's because we own to be self-righteous. Murder is easy. Let somebody try to hurt my kids. Mm-hmm. Murder is easy. Okay. <laughs> it just depends. Healing. Mm. Healing is hard. Mm-hmm. I just, I, I connected with somebody I don't remember who it was that said, like, murder is easy, healing is hard. When you think about how easy it would be to actually kill something, we do it every day. Yeah, Just taking sure. a walk. Sure. We killing a whole bunch of shit. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Under our feet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, healing and taking the initiative to be something different and show up as the most positive version of whatever you are, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's, a, that's not easy. Mm-hmm. Especially since a lot of people in your life will try to tell you that you are not what you are. Mm-hmm. And Kanye West, now this I do remember, Kanye West said it best, like, if you spend a lot of time around people who act like you're not who you are, eventually you're going to forget who you are. Mm. Mm, that's deep. <laughs> it is. Yeah, he be right when he be right, okay? <laughs> <laughs> he do. <know>, like, <laughs> I know, problematic bag in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um so that's 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 just um like I said a couple of the ways this show TEDx that uh with my with my children the way that I mother and the way that I open myself up to be um the definition. My goal is not to just be a mother to my children. My goal is to be like define matriarch. <laughs> like mm-hmm. cuz I feel like I was missing a lot of that. Mm. And I we think it's daddy issues when we run to the wrong neck. You know, niggas, we run to the wrong people. You know what I'm saying? We think it's like, oh, she got daddy issues. Oh, this, this, and that. Six year got daddy issues. Cardi B got daddy issues. We be having mommy issues. Yeah. Like, my, like, yeah. like, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Sure Just that. to, and, and, but that's where the poem that I did, the TEDx performance came from, is me, when I really got down to it, and I really spoke to God, God spoke back in my voice. God was a matriarch, God, and then my mother showed up, and my children, who are female, showed up, and, like, my, I, you know, I reconnected with certain friends, and I built new, positive, unconditional relationships in my life. Like, that was, a, to me, these are certain things that define success. I got you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it all came through that feminine. I started to remember the things I would watch my mother do, not what she told me, mm-hmm. but what I would see her actively do. It raised my awareness as a person, a mother, a woman, and all of those things. Okay. Like, yeah. <laughs> and that's where the poem came from. Mm-hmm. Like, that's literally where it came from. I realized where, what made me, um, and, and every sense of what a mother could possibly be. Um, and beautiful. Yeah. And so that same poem, I had, um, I had performed it at a slam, and I got the lowest score in the room. Wow. And then, it wasn't meant to be. It was meant for you. On, TED. <laughs> on TEDx, yes, um, yeah. So I've been I've been really enjoying myself this year and um, really getting in touch with um, what success means to me, and therefore, 
you know what happiness means to me. We talk about this in in other episodes. Um, mental mental health. A lot of people. It's a big talk around mental illness, but I I don't think that I'm ill. I think that understanding that I have ADHD traits and that I've been diagnosed with bipolar, you know, many one and these kind of things kind of help me understand who I. And it's the pieces to the puzzle for real. Yeah. I'm not ill. I, there's works. nothing wrong with yeah. me, right? The relationship, right? You gotta learn it to understand it to work on it, Shit. right? Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I know. <laughs> so, um, it, definitely the things that I've done this year and been able to accomplish, and and not with, um, not without effort, but also um, I didn't lose anything that I miss, you know. Mm-hmm. So the sacrifice was was great to a certain extent, but. Um, it was, I felt like it was immaculate because I dreamed it first. A lot of what's happening now. So that just uh, affirms me. Mm. That's, that's, I think that's my, that's my final statement. Um, if you can look around yourself and see, um, see something that you have dreamed up, um, more than especially that's not a mistake, but also, Wherever it took to get you there was not a mistake either. That's beautiful. What about you? My divine creation. Yes. Uh, I feel like this year has just been like a big, a big year for accountability and pushing mm. back. That's scary. Okay. <laughs> the memes. No, for real. Women and accountability. For real. Are accountability has definitely <laughs> been the word for 2023 for me. Like we, we in this tenth month, um, and. Being accountable for the people that I let into my life, the bullshit I put up with or decide not to put up with. Like I said, conquering the fears that I entertained that I had that is like, well, shit, I can do something about it. Let's do something about it. And even this is trying to to understand, to come back, to focus on my artistry and, and see the things that I realize what's holding me back. Why do I keep leaving when this is clearly a part of me? Why do I keep pushing it to the wayside? trying to take accountability in that. And as far as the other stuff I do, the podcast and the things that I love. So accountability for my own happiness, I feel like it's something that I'm taking, I'm being proud of this year and getting a deeper understanding, right? So that Mm -hmm. if I go home and be a shitty mother to restore my kid, I'm not, but I'm just saying like an, an example I got to take accountability on the trauma that that's going to cause them or the bad that it, they going to have at school. Whatever they I are, that I made them. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So the shit like that and taking the, the accountability of, no, like you said, you're responsible for your triggers. 2023 has been my biggest growth of understanding me. I learned a lot about myself. Got diagnosed with the ADHD, depression, anxiety, all that shit this year, but it's like, okay, I can wallow in that and use that as an excuse, but now I need to it's go into a... It is a superpower. Mm-hmm. It's called the uh, this pay, the Ferrari brain. I feel like I have a Ferrari, Ferrari for brain. a brain. That's nice. The Ferrari for a brain. <laughs> you Designer know. brain, bitches. Yes. <laughs> it's super fast. <laughs> Keep up, ho. Keep up, ho. You feel me? <laughs> that was great. Oh, my God. Where's the sticker? Okay. <laughs> the sticker. You know, I can't slow down for you, bitches. You got to catch up. <laughs> I'm not fast. You're just listening slow, huh? <laughs> That's so, <great>. yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, just, I don't know. I'm, I'm loving I'm loving this for me, right? I feel like on the other side of this, as I'm growing and working Man. and doing it, it's going to be so much beautiful and just owning my shit. I, yes. I just feel like this is, 2023 has been a very empowering year for me so far. For the black women with the yes. vaginas. I mean, <laughs> that was relevant. That Actually, was I'm relevant. Not changing that. Don't change that. The natural born, because it's a whole nother thing. The natural borns. <laughs> a whole nother thing. I'm not taking that shit back at all. <laughs> Oh my God! I love this. <laughs> a lot of people say I also wanted to, <laughs> to mention because you said something. Well, this is like a combination of me listening to y'all conversation earlier and having this conversation we have right now. But a lot of people say like, "Oh well, a man is supposed to provide and a woman is supposed to do this and that." 
But in reality, when you look at it, this is what I feel like this is this is balance. Like in reality, when you look at it, it's like we all are providers. Mm -hmm. We all nurturers. Mm -hmm. We just do it in a masculine way and a feminine way. Mm -hmm. And the body don't really dictate how, how that shows out. up. Yes. I agree. Like so so we got to take that initiative with every and apply it to every single thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people are um like succumbing to um, these these versions of lifestyles that they willfully accept because they fit the demographic of people who go through that. Yeah, yeah. Like you can really just make that shit up as you're going along. <laughs> like the there is nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah, how he was talking about like the equally yoked earlier, like mm -hmm. that shit is sub subjective, and it yes. depends on what <laughs> sometimes it change. What matters to you, like yes. with the ADHD, like something I learned to look at it is. I got 10 spoons for the day, right? Mm. Work is going to take up six of them spoons. That's what. That's a card. You know that's a, um, a 10 of spoons is a card. Mm-mm. I didn't know that. Uh, mm -mm. No, that's crazy. But uh, if I look at it like that, <laughs> that's crazy. But yeah, I got 10 spoons. If I'm going to spend six of them going to work and getting back, I got two to give to my kids. I got to make up. I got to cook dinner. That's you at least take need up one for yourself. I got to have one for myself. By the time, so for like instance, my man, if I cook dinner... I go to work, I come home, I make dinner for all of us. That done took up nine of my motherfucking spoons. I nine need you spoons to, for dinner? I'm going to work, oh, getting, the dropping whole the day. kids off the whole day. Say, Not dinner. Bitch, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm cooking Christmas every day. <laughs> no. But no, just the whole concept of the getting up at 3.30 in the morning, mm -hmm. doing the 10 hours, going to go get the kids from the bus stop, going to the grocery store to pick the stuff, then come home to cook the dinner. That might take up. Eight to nine of my spoon. Mm -hmm. So I need you to wash the dishes. I need you to clean. And that should kitchen. go without saying. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just saying. Equal the equal <laughs> yoke. You know what I'm yes. saying? If I'm the cook. And people have a skewed view it of what balance is. is. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think I feel like that's really just what it means. Equally yoke mm -hmm. just means balance. And that's yes. not something that you just need to achieve with a partner that you consider to be romantic, whether that you're going to marry. You need to achieve that with your children mm -hmm. and your community, mm -hmm. whatever your job is. You also need to achieve that within yourself mm -hmm. and understand that you are more than just whatever the society tells you you have to be, but also way more than you could ever possibly tell yourself. Mm. You didn't make yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so talk to somebody at a higher source yeah, at some uh, point of what you are and yeah. ask them, mm -hmm. the fuck am I here for? <laughs> and I They'll tell you, though. They will tell, they will tell you. you. They will. <laughs> yes. You pray about it. That's but you got to accept it. You got to yeah. accept it. You got to be obedient. You got to be obedient to who you are. A lot mm. of what you are do not fit into any thought you ever had. Don't fit into any book you ever read, including the Bible. It don't fit. You're trying to find yourself, and you're feeling like, oh, I just don't fit, because that is just for you. Mm -hmm. There is nothing that that could ever possibly fit into, because it is immaculate. It only exists because you do. Mm. It's just for you, Come on, and you can off. go ahead and have it. And so when you are yoked, and you are equally yoked within yourself, your dreams show up parallel to you. You can see them in your real lifetime. You don't have to. You can wake up. In a dream. And you can do that as many times as you want to mm -hmm. for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. um, and those dreams occur in so many different ways. I encourage everybody to, um, to discover all of the different ways that you can dream. Like, I have dreams specifically for my children. I have dreams for my business. I have dreams for myself as a, as a physical and mental and spiritual and energetic being. You know what I'm saying? I have all of these visions for a family, for, you know, all of these things that I want for a success as it relates to being a writer, for all of these things I'm responsible for. And so if I look up, and just like my babies with their grades, that's something you're responsible for. Mm -hmm. It's not the point that you need that to be validated. It's the point that it's yours to be responsible for. That's just right. like your mind to be responsible for. So the things that you hold me responsible for are directly reflective of whatever you hold yourself responsible for. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you're not going to put effort into your own life, mm -hmm. There is only a certain amount of effort you can expect for everybody else around you. That's not just going from parent to sibling to immediate family member. That's going to literally everybody else around you. Mm -hmm. You got to be more than just sensitive about it. You got to mm -hmm. put effort in. It's gonna cost you something. It's gonna cost you something. Even you ain't never been to the club and it was free, dog. And if you did, 
You probably did not enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> it cost you way more than ten, fifteen dollars. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to cost you something. Everything's going to cost you something. I'm here. We here. We in. Uh, we at the Shotcast Network somewhere in Detroit doing some shit that we do. <laughs> and I'm here um, with May Henny from uh, Toast After Dark, uh, Mother Poet, newly entrepreneur. Yes. New. new it, it's new. Listen, we just float it. Just be like, what you Just ride that bitch <laughs> until, it, until the buck break. <laughs> <laughs> long as you That's steady cool. and comfortable you good <laughs> <laughs> yes where can we find you boo <laughs> yeah. yeah y'all can find me minding my business but hey. if you want to keep up with my dailies i'm on instagram at m-a-e-h-e-n-n-y underscore that's may henny underscore and i'm may henny on facebook and check us out under the shotcast network on YouTube, Toast After Dark is on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Make sure you like, subscribe, and follow all that good shit. Share, tell a friend. We need to get our people up. Come fuck with us. Period. As I like to say, my name is Coffee Dark and Sweet. It is also One Crafty Mama. It is also Energetic invest- Investments. And tonight at Shotcast Networks, it is Midnight Coffee Podcast. Follow one of those things on Instagram. I'm also on Apple and... Um, Apple um, Podcasts and Spotify. Um, you know, we just have natural organic conversations. Um, and, yeah, thanks for spending the night with me. Hey. <laughs>